Welcome to another episode of The Profile. My name is Gary Dunn and I'm your host with the most. On this show we typically find out something we don't really know about our guest. And thanks to Procopy we're able to bring you an insight and some of the more colourful members of our Perth music industry. Tonight is no different. The limos have pulled up outside. Everything is happening. We've got a big crowd of people in here. And our guest this week is currently writing a book about his memoirs and is more than likely responsible for starting the careers of many of Perth's musicians. So this week on the couch, or the chair, we're going to get a couch one day, is Mr. Des Jose. Welcome, Des. Yeah, Wonderful to you, have Gary. you in here. Thank you. Maybe before we start, listen, boys. If you blokes made me bloody deaf over these years <laughs> playing too bloody loud on stage, so you're going to have to talk up if you want to make it a good interview, all right? No worries, mate. Look, I've brought in the executive producer, Mr. Alan Simpson, tonight. Hey, Des. Oh, 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 not that loud, mate. <laughs> because I think I need a bit of help with this one. Okay. So, so Des, tell me, how did it all start for you? Um, well, I started work at uh, the uh, State Treasury Department. I was there for about... 10 years um, and at the same time I was uh, running some judo clubs around town and um, also had a, a second job at the uh, Top Hat nightclub as a, a bouncer, right? And uh, I was offered uh, one day the uh, ownership of the club so we decided to buy it, you yeah. know, and that's when it all started. Uh, we started... Uh, booking bands for the club and uh, we had a little office out the back of the uh, the nightclub where we run uh, a company called uh, Satin Enterprises which uh, eventually down the track turned into uh, the Rock Exchange you know? yeah. and um, then offbeat promotions as well which uh, did guess, all the big tours. Just, I just want to clarify one thing. I'm sorry Al. Oh, I just want to <coughs> clarify one thing Des. Yes. I'll just get this right. You were doing security at the nightclub and then within a short period of time, the owner gave it to you. No, he didn't give it well, to me. Well, I mean, you muscled uh, him out. You know, I bought you it. muscled we him out. We bought it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. left on good terms. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, that's all right. Let's clarify that. That's all right. So, okay, you uh, took over the Top Hat Club. Mm-hmm. Um, Saturn Enterprises became Rock Exchange? That's dead. Not at that stage. We were still Saturn Enterprises. Uh, and we were bringing in acts like uh, John Farnham, or yep. Johnny Farnham in those days, and uh, Billy Thorpe and the Aztecs, um, uh, you know, all those uh, stars of the 70s, yep. you know, the 1970s. And um, some of the stories about some of these acts are in the book I'm writing or we have written actually, um, like the, one of the stories is about Billy Thorpe, right? Now, Billy Thorpe in those days was probably the la- one, of the, one of the loudest acts in Australia and he had the biggest PA stack you've ever seen, right? And um, he turns up and the road crew load all his gear in and there's no three-phase power, right? Because, you know, who, who's got three-phase power and they're, in in WA, pl- they wouldn't have even known about three-phase power in, in, in those not days. Not in the seventies, no. Yeah. And uh, so uh, started off on the wrong foot, didn't we? Right. So at the night of the show, we had to turn every fridge off, all the air conditioning <laughs> off, all the lights off. There was no electricity anywhere else except going to the stage, right? So we could operate the PA yep. system. You know, oh, we had a full house. The queue went down the street for miles, you know. Did it turn off at any point? No, we no. were lucky, you know. Yeah. But uh, it was the power box was red hot, you know. She was <laughs> right on the limit, you know. And, and uh, Billy did a few shows outside the club for us as well, you know, a couple of the hotels. And um, the story, one of the story in the book goes that... Uh, he was staying at one of the hotels in town, well, didn't he, right? And he was on the on the tenth floor, and his lift got stuck on about the sixth floor, <laughs> and he's stuck in this lift for about half an hour, and no one can get Billy Thorpe out of the lift. <laughs> so, consequently, you know, he loses it, 
and he smashed all the mirrors in the in the lift. <laughs> he he just just went went berserk, you know. So that was the the first uh, big uh, drama we had with the Eastern States Act, you know. Yeah. Look, I don't remember. I don't know if this is in the book, but uh, can you remember um, telling the Ferris brothers, who were in excess at the became in excess, to go to Kalgoorlie and play covers? No, 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 no. no? Can you the, the clarify whole, the, the, the whole story? The whole story was. Ferris Brothers were just another cover band, mm. right, in Perth, right? Yep. They, they were writing original material and uh, they were getting ready to become an original band. Yep. But the, the Perth bands, you know, always used to play covers so they made money to support their original uh, goal. And, um, well, the Ferris Brothers were one of my cover bands at this stage and yep. we signed a contract with the Tower Hotel in Kalgoorlie for yep. the band to go up there and do the whole weekend. You sent me there a few times. Oh, did I? Yes. No, oh, you <laughs> can't be that bad, boy. <laughs> so the, the contracts have been signed, the post has been sent up and put around the tower and we just started the radio advertising and stuff and the band comes into the office, right? Um, Sorry, Jess, we're not going to Kalgoorlie. Um, no, we've had enough of this tra travelling bit. We want to stay and play in places like the Broadway Tavern, you know, yep. which is a little pokey hole. Um, so I did my cool. I just lost it. Very unlike you, Jess. Uh, <laughs> you get out. <laughs> I just lost it. What were the words of advice you gave them when oh, they left the door? The words of advice were, listen... You'll never work. If you don't bloody well fucking go to Kalgoorlie, <laughs> you'll never work in this town again, right? The big and biggest and famous words ever. Yeah. And the biggest mistake I made ever because, you know, in 12 months' time, they were the biggest band in the world. Mate, we're all human beings. No, we all make true, mistakes. Yeah, yeah. But don't, don't be so hard on yourself. Mm, yeah. Now, now, no. They did a movie recently with yes, uh, In Excess. Now, yeah. Your character was portrayed in that a little bit different to what you were. I would have thought maybe someone like a George Clooney could have played no, the part know. better, more closer to the image. Who who picked that? The guy that oh. played your part. He had blonde hair and well, bald or something. I mean, this, this guy played my part. He, yeah. he didn't have one hair on his head. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, I was known at that stage for the, you know. Oh, the, yeah. The yeah. Old, yeah. Mo, the mo. Because yeah, I remember it used to go right oh, down here classic. and it used to be big yeah. and bushy. Yeah, and, he had the big buff. Yeah. He had lots of hair. Because oh, yeah. I remember, like, we used to say, we've got to go and see Des. So, uh, <laughs> you know, Dave, <laughs> <I'm worried. laughs> Dave <laughs> Warner was one of the producers or one of the casting directors yeah. or whatever it was. I don't know if they had any... Uh, <clears throat> And he's saying who who played my part, but the guy didn't look like me, did he? Yeah. You, you no, don't think no, you told not, at, not at one iota. You you don't think that maybe at some point in Dave Warner's career you told him to fuck off and you'll never work in this town again, would you? There's a couple of stories in the book about Dave, oh, Dave Warner. Dave Warner's too, in there. Right? Yeah, looking forward to that. Mate, mm. I can only be thankful you never told me to fuck off. But no, 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 know, no. later on tonight, I reckon. Yes, <laughs> okay. So just moving on, what band do you wish you could have managed? What? Australian bands or international anyone, bands? Anyone, who's, who's one band well, you went, fuck, I wish I could my, manage them. A couple of my favourite shows I did do, and I really uh, wrapped in the bands, like it was U2, yep. Kiss, yep. you know, ACDC, that, yep. that, that was some of the three of the biggest bands that uh, I yep. promoted their concerts for them, you know. So you were part of the Frontier Company in Frontier those days? Frontier Company, yeah. yeah. If, and, um, so what, what, I mean, what were some of the big names you toured apart from who you just said, ACDC and, oh, and the like? Oh, well, actually, we actually toured and promoted over 2,300 concerts. Wow. That's a lot of concerts and a lot of tours. Yeah. And virtually, I don't think there's one one band in the world we didn't have something to do with yeah. at that stage, yes. you know. We had, we even did uh, places, or oh, not bands, like uh, Elvis Costello, yep. uh, Smashing Pumpkins, you know, all those slightly alternative acts as well, you know. Have you written a chapter on this in your book? Oh, it's all in the book, mate, yep. yeah. When did we get the wrestling, Des? The wrestling? You the World Championship Wrestling to Perth. Oh, we only had about a go at the wrestling once. 
Yeah, that was a disaster. But didn't you represent Australia in the Olympics? No, not really. I was a, I was a middleweight champion of WA and Australia, but uh, I went away with the Austra with the Australian team to the Olympics. Yeah, and that's probably why we everyone that we mm. got around that you were a judo yeah. expert and better not mess with Des. No, no, none no. of us did, obviously. But this relates to the top hat story I was going back earlier. Yeah, the martial arts expert. Look, I. I just bring this out here. This is uh, from behind the black curtain. Des Joes and Heather Campbell. Who, who is Heather Campbell? She was actually the whole the whole thing started off um, with the Perth History eighties uh, pub band. No, 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 it's a government government department or Perth History Centre. They're part of the uh, state library, oh, yeah. and they wanted to do an interview on me, right? Yeah. So. The interview has now turned into a book, right? Yeah. And the story about uh, all the acts we've done and uh, all the funny situations and things like that, you know? So there are a lot of backstage stories in there. Well, that... that's why it's called Behind the Black Curtain, you know? Yes. A lot Did... of things in there that t the general public don't need to don't know. know and they don't need to know and they won't know. There's, <laughs> there's one thing I would like to get out tonight if I possibly can. Yeah. And you know, you were featured on Channel 9 pub band documentary a little while ago. And uh, recently, uh, this man here, Alan Simpson from V Capri, mentioned a story about a buxom blonde who's <laughs> swimming in a blow-up swimming pool <laughs> in a band room at the Florida Hotel. And no. he didn't finish the story off because they wouldn't let him. No, um, no I, I wanted to. Are you able no, to enlighten us on any of those events? There's some stories have got to stay, you know, between the boys, you know. <laughs> but it's just, there's a bit in the in the book about it, right? Because at one stage in my uh, career, I used to manage all the strippers in Perth, right? Yep. To the government clamp down on the uh, strippers being in the hotels. Yep. And that that chopped that side of the industry out, so uh, I had access to the strippers. So, so there was a few spare ones at the well, Florida. No, there wasn't. There wasn't spare. Well, the boys earned it, mate. So <laughs> <laughs> it was a contra deal. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 it was no, nothing. No, the, the deal was. was if we got a thousand payers through the door on on any one night, they get a show. You didn't give. We got a thousand on many occasions, and you. you yeah, but the way with it, yeah, but these guys got two thousand some nights. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. What a show that was after. <laughs> <laughs> just, just talking about your band, Gary. Your band was PJ Hooker, yep. right? Which become Fun World, yep. right? Two great bands. Thank you. Very, very good entertainers. Um, there's a story in the book about uh, the lead singer of PJ Hooker. Steve, Steve yep. yeah, and uh, Steve had this act on stage where he used to become a human blowtorch, right? He <laughs> and blew the, my ass off a few and times. The, <laughs> the story goes, he's at the Charles Hotel this night, and uh, his mouth is full of kerosene, right? <laughs> and he lights it, and he blows the kerosene up, and the flame goes up. And above the stage at the Charles Hotel, for some strange reason, the soundproofing was made out of compressed straw. Yes. <laughs> and, woof, <laughs> top of the stage is on fire. Fire engines. Yeah, and we've got 800, 900 people in there, you know, and there's smoke and there's stages. There's there was obviously no strippers because there was only 900. There wasn't a thousand. There wasn't. Oh, okay, no. 900, yeah. <laughs> and... This roadies running around everywhere with a fire extinguishers, mate. And honestly, that black star stain on the roof was there for years. Yes, that's right. The hotel didn't bother to clean it down, no. you know. Well, they didn't have a well, budget for that. Probably not. Uh, uh, Des, I was going to ask you a question. <clears throat> what, when you had all these bands... I'm sorry? What was that, Des? When you, when you were uh, managing bands... What mm. did you look for in the band, apart from obviously five good-looking guys at any one point? You're talking about yourself. No, no, I wasn't. I wasn't hitting that that path. <laughs> he wasn't a bad looker <laughs> in his young days. <laughs> it's just no, gone a what, bit astray. What, what did you think in a band was something that you would want well, to get? Well, the band had to. The band, instead of having to be good musos, always had to be good entertainers, right? Yeah. They had to get up there and they had to be able to communicate with the audience. They had to, 
involve the audience in what they're doing, right? Now, the successful bands in Perth at that stage, you know, or early, early in the 70s have started, right? Are probably one of the first, uh, what would we call, call them uh, theatrical bands for a name anyway, mm-hmm. was uh, in the 70s uh, a band called Pocket, right? Mm. Uh, which used to have the Sissinger brothers in there, mm-hmm. right? Now, Danny Steve, and Steve. Yep. Danny and Steve, yep. Steve was the front man who used to come out dressed up as Fred Flintstone with <laughs> yes. a, with the uh, <laughs> with the leather, uh, the uh, skins and yes. things, and and he had the body for it too. Mate, oh yes, he? mate, he had hey? the he had Ooh. the big belly, and uh, he used to carry on stage. <laughs> he used to have this leg of a horse, <laughs> yes. and it was really a leg he got from the butcher shop, <laughs> yeah, right? Exactly right? And he used to wave this leg around, <laughs> and and uh, one one night down the White Sands, right? They, they're known, they were known for, you know, doing all these weird and wonderful things. They were, you know, because they played the heavy rock and roll, but they used to put theatrics in with it, right? And uh, up comes this pig. They've got a live <laughs> pig on stage, right? And the band starts singing the song, Old MacDonald Had a Farm, right? And every time they come to the pig going oink, 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 that hold the pig up in the air, right? And all the audience would go oink, 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 oink. Uh, 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 that, Des, that uh, was a cruel finish. Because I think the RSPCA would have, no, have something well, to say about the, that today. The, the pig died, right? Yes. And I think it was Sunday roast. <laughs> <laughs> well, for the Sunday session. Yeah, <laughs> Just something like that. You know, and I mean, Steve was always getting up to tricks. <laughs> At at the Raffles Hotel one day, you know, how, how crowded the Raffles used to get. Yeah. Uh, they're on stage and um, it was hot and sweaty and Steve um, was so, oh, the, the sweat was just pouring off him. And the the Raffles host Hotel had the windows open yeah. looking onto the river. So halfway through the set when the band was doing a, uh, oh, what was a it? Solo. A solo yeah, yeah. lead break or something. Danny Steve was... took off, jumped out through the window, <laughs> cr- run across the car park, <laughs> dived in the river, swam around, come back out, climbed back through the window and finished the bracket, right? You know, he used to, Lucky he used to, there was no bull sharks in there at the time. Uh, <laughs> but, was, you know, he used to get up to all these funny tricks all the time. And the one that reminded me, uh, well, I like, uh, rem- remember really well, was the night they were doing the at the raffles it was, they were doing this song uh, about this hangman, right? And Steve was had the noose around his neck <laughs> and the road crew had the the scaffolding up yes. there and they used and part of the song he used to swing off off the stage with the uh, yeah. the noose around his neck, right? But the, the trick was he had these hooks in the back of his shirt, holding him up so this track didn't yes. strangle him. Yeah. But this night, the hook <laughs> slipped, didn't they? <laughs> the hook, and boy, he was really a... You know. <laughs> well, <laughs> occupation, health and safety. Yeah, right there. Exactly. Well, everything turned out all right because he was... He's, 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 sti- he's all right. He's, he's, still, he's mixing my band. He's still generation. walking around, yeah. So, um, who was the absolute worst band you ever managed? No, 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 no. no. There no? was never... I wouldn't have managed a worst band, no. Mate. There must have been someone down the bottom of the pile there. That Hard to deal with, Des. Yeah. Who, who was the tough one? Oh, there's a lot of little bands, mate, but uh, the worst tour I ever did was a band called Jimmy and the Boys, right? Yeah. They were from Sydney. I saw them at the Overflow on the Monday night. Yeah. Michael Parks and Barry Litton came over with them, and uh, I thought it was an absolutely fantastic show. Well, mate, that was a band I lost, lost me shirt on, <laughs> and I lost me underpants as well. And, uh, and I'll tell you what, there were a bunch of gay, gay, gay guys, as you know, right? Well done, Parksy. Now, that, <laughs> as, I think it was Michael Chug. He managed the yep. band, and he was getting his own back on me, I'm sure. Because he rang up and he said, listen, there's, it's going to be a hard tour. Uh, you have to do a lot of promotion, so okay, Michael, I trust you. So I've got this promotion happening. 
Now, one of the lead singers was a, a guy called Jolene, right? He used to dress yep. up and he was a, a drag queen, right? Jolene, and, um, Jolene. And the plane pulls up at the airport and Jolene gets out of the plane with the, in the drag, you know. But unknown to him, I'd arranged the gay community to be there with placards and things, right? <laughs> so there was hundreds of gay people there with placards saying, we love you, Jolene, you know, get down and you know, all this sort of stuff, Jolene, right? And uh, they were running around the, running around the uh, airport lounge and uh, fed, federal police, you know, who look after the airport, what's going on here, <laughs> you know? And this is, you know, so that was it. It made the front page of the paper. Yes, I remember. Yeah, it made, made the front page of the paper, and uh, that's twice I made the front page. I'll tell you about <laughs> the other one later. And uh, we've only got half an hour, Des. Yeah. Oh, it's all right. This, it's in the book. These um, these guys, they didn't pull anybody to any gig. You know, Ignatius Jones. Uh, yeah, Joy Ignatius, yeah, that's yeah. him. Yeah, yeah. Look, My, they, they had, had all that combat stuff over the stage. That's right. That. They had a big d camouflage. You just wanted to climb over net. the netting. Yes, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And, uh, <laughs> mate, I expected we'd get someone from the gay community there. No one. Oh, was there? Uh, yeah, but you might. Well, the gay community. I don't right. know where you were, but I didn't see. But the Hertzman Hotel, mate, it was me and the door girl. And the band, yeah. I tell you, yeah, oh yeah, he did me shirt. Yeah. The, the other undies. front page, huh? the other front page, was that Al Cash? That's Al Cash on mm. the, yeah. I remember that. Tell yeah. me the story about the drum kit that he That was Daily up. News, wasn't it? That's right, front. Yeah. Yeah. And we made the uh, six o'clock news too. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, complete bullshit, I mean, wasn't it? It's all bulldust, yeah, oh. but it's, it's, it's publicity, right? Yeah, that's that's right. what you got to do. Yeah. you got to profile your bands. Yeah, you know? absolutely, yeah. yeah. We've got so much to talk about, we're going to have to come back next week for part two.